Hello everybody and welcome back to Gamer Flavor playing some Half-Life 2 with Beaker and Ricky. I'm Beaker. And I'm Gamer Flavor. No, you're, you're Ricky. <laughs> How dare you? That is my brand. I have and worked... Really gamer Flavor. <laughs> I have worked so hard on this brand. People know me in multiple houses. You do you, bro. I watched your live stream the other day, and I was like, oh, look at this guy explaining to us why every 20 minutes he's like, Welcome to Gamer Flavor. I just do it so you know where you're at, because I know half of you are on opioids. And that's why you watch it, Gamer Flavor. Well, that's, that's our American audience. Um, surprisingly, God, he's doing a lot of damage. He's flexing. He's... Uh, oh, yeah, get him. Oh Jesus! Oh no, bombs! If you flex tape this boat, you'll you'll survive for sure. That's my hope. Oh, he's coming for me! Oh Lord! I notice, although this has infinite ammo, it does go away and like has to build back up. That's a. Uh, it's it's over like, here. Let's say oh, that. over here! I thought you were like dropping bullets right into a barrel. Yeah. <laughs> now this is it. Go. All right, let's try this again. Oh, that's right. I can't kill him. I need to go open the gate. Oh yeah, figured that out. Yeah, it's been a few days. Whoa! Don't let them back behind the scenes. Behind the curtain. They got. They got to be a Patreon for that. Leave a leave yeah. a little mystery. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go to my Patreon. Go to Beaker's Patreon. You gotta pay. You gotta let them know you're a big fan. And then you get little, you get little stuff like you get uh, to know about uh, the <laughs> what's done in the back. You get to know how bad we are at video games. Show a little leg for you. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh my god. What do, what do they want from me? That's what that's, I want to know. Yeah, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. So I found out like eventually I'd like to monetize this channel, assuming that I get enough views. Um, I don't think YouTubers typically talk about that, but I'm in it for the money. Well, you want to do something that you like to do and make money from it. And everybody, even if yeah. this doesn't work out, it's still something fun that you tried. You got to see how good at it you are and all that good stuff. But if it does work Learn out and anybody thinks you're funny. Basic video editing skills. If someone thinks you're funny or people like to watch your gameplay or what have you and you can or, make Or if I bring, bring a little bit of joy to a weary world. That's true. In the Twitch stream I was watching, you said, Where, oh. wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're special and I love you. <laughs> Some shit like that was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Do you think they smell the bullshit? <laughs> nah, well, that's how I don't give a shit about you. People like to do that. People, not just people like to hear it and feel that way, but people like to give that. It's like, remember the end of that podcast we did together? The end of season one? I s uh... Talking about your friends in Colorado? Your friends in Colorado, yeah. No, I'm not trying to plug it, but at the end of it, remember we said, uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Oh my god. How shitty it gets, how bad it can be. We're here for you. We are, and we lovingly remain your friends in Colorado. You just hope that. That's nice. You just hope that someone might need it, might need to hear that, and they get to hear it. And there have been times when other people have gotten to do it. But, I can't. I, I'm kidding, by the way. I really do, like, I know I don't know these people, and so I can't, like, you can't, I don't think you can really love something you don't know, but in a general sense, I really hope their lives are going well. You know? Dude, does it, it look like you almost killed the helicopter. Ah, no, he gets smoky, and then he starts dropping bizoms. Well, I don't want to keep on harping on right. other people's Let's Plays, but Dan did one when he was doing his Wind Waker Let's Play with Aaron. At one point, uh -huh. I was in a really bad place myself. I would feel like if I ever got real close to actual depression, this is the closest I've been. I was just sitting on my couch all day long for hours and hours, days and days. I didn't want to do it. I was like, this could all end. I was so upset because I had been going to college for a millennia and they were claiming that like one of my credits just wasn't going to count towards what I wanted to do, even though my advisor told me to do it, and I was just not going to graduate. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, 
and they do all kinds of stuff to get your money. Oh, you have to pay for electives. So I'm like, okay, so I pay for PE. I paid for a bunch of different PEs because electives broaden your mind. They could just tell you that they want more money. I would pay them more money. I just want a <laughs> freaking diploma. But I'm watching the Yeah, but then they can't they can't pretend that it's for, you know, some higher Ugh. cause. Dude, I'm watching that. I, that I'm not even watching it. I have the Wind Waker game grums on to feel as if I'm not depressed, like as if I wanted something on, as if I cared. And it gets to a point where Dan yeah. talks about throwing his like medication in the ocean, and this time he had like it's. I'm oversimplifying it, and he went back and was still, like, "Oh, I vaguely remember he this." He came back and told yeah. him like, "Don't throw your medicine in the ocean," but you know like. His whole thing was he told this long story about how he felt, how dark the world got, and how someone, one of his friends, just said, don't obsess over that. And they got him to look up obsession, and he figured out about OCD and all kinds of stuff. And it got to so many people. It got to me a little bit. But what got to me more was the next episode, he had to put himself at the end of the episode talking to the camera, explaining to people, like, how, how much it meant to him that it meant so much to us. And then, like, that part made it feel even, like, more to me. It was like, ah, oh, Dan also knows that it affected this us. This piece of shit. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, because he is a person, and, I, and he went through this stuff himself, and... You know, he just wants to share his experience. I I haven't really had an issue with depression personally, but uh, I did have a problem with anxiety. Um, like I just uh, randomly uh, had. Oh, I've had panic attacks a few times in the past, but um, here randomly, like a year or so ago, I just uh, kind of hyperventilated, passed out, like fainted, and. Um, didn't really know. We're all the pretty reason. sure it was overexertion. <laughs> I was sitting on a couch and I had just eaten firehouse subs. <laughs> over had a good sweat going. It was all the meats. Um, no, I think what it was uh, was um, <laughs> I had uh, reached like the highest weight I had ever been in my life, and um, I was. You were anxious about being a fatty. No, this is just where the story starts. So. Um, I was like, oh man, I can't, you know, I can't let this keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna exercise, and <clears throat> rather than develop healthy habits and build up, you know, like a sane person would, I just ran outside and like sprinted for like a, a mile and a half or two miles. That'll do it. And um, I don't know if this thing's killable, honestly. Like, I think you're supposed to shoot at it until it does this. You avoid its bombs. You get over to the lever or the little wheel. Oh, my God. So he's about to turn around and start shooting again. Okay, I don't want to... Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Where is he? Ah, okay. So after he quits shooting, after I shoot him some more, maybe, maybe then. Okay, the best way to deal with the helicopter is whenever it's dropping the mines, get to a safe distance and just stand still and shoot a bunch of bullets into it while it's dropping the mines. Oh, okay. So you rows of barrel mines. Got it. So you do want to still try and kill it. I thought that it might be unkillable and that I just needed to get this gate open. Like Suck it. Of dodging the bullets when he's shooting the bullets, and then trying to do the damage when he's dropping the bullets. Oh god! <sighs> it's frustrating. So anyway, um, I decided that. Uh, thanks for the tip. I decided that I was going to exercise, so I went and sprinted, you know, and I overexerted myself to the point of where I almost threw up. Like. Uh, and then I started exercising that same day, did a bunch of exercises, didn't eat very much, uh, didn't drink enough water, and um, basically, then towards the end of the day, I'm watching this uh, film theory episode. And um, God, we watch so much YouTube content. Yeah. Well, I love film theory. He's he's awesome at doing that. Matt Pat, he's he's genius. He's a genius. Matt Pat, shout out to Matt Pat. Like you know anyone on the internet. But anyway, um, 
he uh, he's doing this video about the Grinch and about his heart growing three sizes. And he's talking about how um, it's actually medically possible for a heart to grow. And, um, or like, it was something to do with uh, how if you overexerted yourself, it could cause like you to have this dead man walking syndrome where your heart just like got overexerted and then you're basically going to die. It just hasn't happened yet. <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> and <laughs> so I hear this and I'm like, oh my god, I uh, did a lot of running. And he starts talking about the <laughs> symptoms. And um, and I just I'm like sorry to laugh at no, it's fun. fine. It's it's silly, but um, so he starts going over the symptoms, and of course I'm like, oh god, I think this is happening to me. And then uh, I kind of hyperventilated, and I felt a little weird and a little weak and faint. And I get up, and I'm like, I don't feel good. I don't know what's going on. I walk across the room, and I just can't stand up anymore. And so I like laid down. My legs got weak. I laid down and uh, Don't get out of there. I was like, "Call an ambulance!" And then I <laughs> then I passed out because I didn't know what was happening. I've never fainted before. I've not been a woman in a 1920s movie. <laughs> Call an ambulance! I was just like, "Call an ambulance!" And uh, yeah, so uh, ambulance gets there. They check everything out they're like you're perfectly fine um and i was like okay well that's that's weird they're like you want to go to the hospital and i was like yeah we'll go to the hospital and um uh so we go to the hospital that's how i spent two thousand dollars actually no i had okay insurance unlike many people uh it's a real problem but uh <laughs> So, uh, I go to the hospital, they're like, you're perfectly fine, um, you probably just, like, freaked yourself out, and you have this thing that, like, regulates your blood pressure, and if you're freaked out, it can, um, uh, get a little janky, this is not the doctor's terms, and, frazzled. yeah, a little frazzled, a little fucked up, <laughs> and, uh, so, oh my god, I hate this thing more... I hate this thing a lot. Where is it? This might be one of the biggest boss fights of the game. This is, though. apparently. Like, nothing has topped this in the first Half-Life game. Except for this one hallway that just keeps exploding. Can't get me here. Yeah. So once they took you to the hospital and they told you that your stuff was janky, it was just like... They didn't give you any medicine no, or I was, anything. That was totally fine. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, totally fine. So I just. And it was on uh, Christmas Eve, by the way. <laughs> it was on Christmas Eve? Yeah, this was on Christmas Eve. And so I was just like thanking them profusely. I was like, I'm so sorry to get you guys out for this whole situation. They were just like, no, nah, it's our job. We're working anyway. They were really kind. And, um,. So then, like, a couple of months go by, and uh, I'm just sitting there watching uh, TV, and all of a sudden I start feeling it again. Like, it was a very distinct sensation. It was uh, like the cold liquid was being poured down the inside of my chest. You need to find a crate for health. Yeah, I know. I'm looking. I mean, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No, no, fudge you. So I'm guessing when you felt the feeling the second time, you knew what was yeah, happening. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is about to happen. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, so I was just like, all right, here, here it comes. And I fainted. And for me, though, I was like, Maybe the doctors are wrong. Maybe there is something wrong with me. Why would this happen a second time? And um, uh, I basically had like a panic attack whenever I woke up, and I like had trouble breathing. It felt really tight in my chest. Um, so I'm sitting there like, oh my god, I think like I might be having a heart attack or something because what the hell's going on? And, 
called an ambulance again, and they came out you and called the ambulance a second time. Huh? You called the ambulance a second time. Yeah, I was like, I look, I'd rather pay, you know, whatever it costs than be, you know, uh, dead. Be dead. Yeah, right. It must be nice. <laughs> I had a decent job at the time. Must be a nice choose the hospital over death. Yeah, it was uh, it was nice to have that option. I was very privileged. So um, we were talking about privilege earlier. And uh, so anyway, um, they come out. They do uh, an EKG in the ambulance, and they're just like, "Dude, your heart's fine. Like nothing's happening. You did not have a heart attack. You're perfectly <laughs> okay." And uh, um, they were like, do you want to go to the hospital? I was like, no, I guess not. Like, I don't want to just go there and have the exact same thing happen again. So, uh, yeah. But after that, I just had this, like, I was always on guard about this happening again for a long time. And I couldn't even drive my car because I was worried that um, I just had a very high level of anxiety that this would happen again while I was driving and then I would like wreck into a vehicle because it felt like it just came out of nowhere and I couldn't really explain what caused it. And so for like, I took a week off of work, I didn't eat, I lost like 20 pounds, 15 pounds. Um, nice, you were anxious but you were looking good. Yeah, there's, there's that bonus. Um, I just laid in bed and like, I couldn't play video games because any, any simulation just made me incredibly anxious. Um, like it was, it was physically overwhelming. Um, I would just lay down and try and sit quietly until I recuperated, you know, like until I calmed down. And then, you know, so a week goes by, and uh, I would try driving around the neighborhood. Um, just to get less freaked out about it because the only, I mean, their therapist will tell you it's called cognitive behavioral therapy. You'll, like, the best way to overcome a fear is to essentially face it and maybe do it in stages where you don't overwhelm yourself, you know? Start out backing up and going forward in the driveway a little bit, and then uh, maybe drive around the block a little bit, and then go down to the store and come back. You piece of shit! Yeah. You fucking cunt! Oh yeah! Ooh! Ooh! Yeah! Chase my pain! Okay, so yeah, so oh, then I would, God. uh. How long's it been? Are you tracking the time? Yeah, you need to hurry up and finish this story so we get next time on Gamer Flavor, bro. Got it. So, uh, anyway, um, practiced a bit. Got to where I was less freaked out. Definitely had my moments where I had to pull over, catch my breath, like do breathing exercises. Um, went to a therapist, uh, started taking uh, anti-anxiety medication. Um, did that for a few months and slowly and gradually got back to normal and got to where I don't, you know, have this fear and anxiety as much anymore. Every now and then it'll crop up, but now I have some good tools from therapy to, to deal with it. So uh, what I'll say is therapy really does help. Therapy is freaking amazing. Um, it's just helpful to be able to unload about your problems to a professional who can kind of help you frame them and understand them better um, and understand the root cause of some of your issues and be able to work through that. Um, I had an excellent therapist and I was lucky enough to be able to afford to go and have insurance to help with that. Um, so I hope that anybody who's like on the fence, if you can do it, um, I hope you get help because it drastically improved my life. I was able to go about enjoying video games again, which is a major thing I love, and um, being able to go out and experience new stuff. So just wanted to say that. I hope anybody who needs help can get it. Aw, that's so, that's so lovely. Game! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I don't no, take well, it as an insult. Next, next time, uh, give it, give it. we're gonna kill some of these fascists. <laughs> <laughs>